Hey everyone, today we're reviewing Martha Wells's Witch King. I got this book from the publisher for the purpose of review. Okay, let's get started. This book was fun. If I were to describe this book, it'd be a combination of Carol Berg's Right Kirob series along with Steven Erickson's Malazan. So with that in mind, it's good. Just don't compare it to Murderbot. This is not a spectacular start to a series as Murderbot was for its series. So let's go into what are some like tropes, the target audience, the genre, that sort of thing. I think this book is adult targeted, but it's pretty safe for everyone over the age of 14 to read this. Um, there's a demon protagonist who jumps between bodies. There's life energy and like death magic. There's a dual timeline with past and present. Friends in the past are potentially enemies in the present. Um, and there's a non-European inspired setting. I think it might even be Central African because I think I remember them reading. I think I remember reading that they eat Tef at one point, but don't quote me on that. Uh, yeah, let's get started. So my emotional response with this was I had fun reading this. I read it very quickly. Um, this book throws a lot of plot right at you in the face with minimal exposition or world building. That's why I compare this to something like Malazan, which is throws you right in the deep end right at the beginning. This is a relatively short palette cleanser of a novel at 432 pages or a 13 hour audiobook. As a palette cleanser, you could read it between two larger books. Um, it went down easy. It was nice to read. It was well written. Its prose was lush. It was sharply paced and its world building was enthralling. If I were to make a complaint about this book, this felt like book two in a series. Specifically, we didn't get to know as much about the characters as we usually do in a book one in a series. I feel like we finished this book and the characters were still somewhat strangers to me. That said, this my favorite part of this book was it had a lived in feeling of the, to the setting and how the timelines interacted with one another. In the past, Kai seems like a much more innocent person than he does in the present. Uh, in the past, the heroes interact with one another as friends, but in the present, they're potentially enemies. You know that someone betrayed Kai at some point and you don't know who it was. That was a really good idea by the author to read. When I do a review, I like to talk about uh, my biases going into this. In this case, I feel it is important for me to mention the fact that going into this, I read a few reviews for this book before I actually started reading it, and they were all pointed out this book was pretty mid. Um, I disagree with them in retrospect. However, I think it was good that I read those going into this simply because it set my expectations fairly low and this exceeded those expectations. This was a good book. Um, I enjoyed it. It was a pleasant time. So let's get into this book's concept and the execution upon that concept. Uh, to use a gross generalization, this is a dual timeline novel. In the past, the heroes team up to defeat a Dark Lord and then they take over the Dark Lord's kingdom. In the present, they are the rulers of the Dark Lord's kingdom, but there is now dissent among the former heroes. One of them has betrayed everyone else, trying to take a bid to take over the kingdom for themselves. This is a cool idea. In the past, you're all friends. In the present, maybe you're not friends. Someone betrayed you. Someone's trying to take over. Good idea. This book was well executed upon. I don't say this very often, but I feel like this book could have been 70 to 100 pages longer. Um, I wanted to spend more time with these characters. I wanted to see more of the magic. I wanted to explore the world and civilizations more. What we got here was enough of the story, but I felt like the dual timeline narrative resulted in not enough time being spent in either timeline. This is a good problem to have. It's a good idea to leave your readers wanting more. Now let's talk about the characters. The, this was like the weakest part of the book in my opinion. As I said, like I didn't really finish this book feeling like I really knew who these characters were. They were still strangers to me. Uh, this book was all business and no pleasure. Every single chapter was devoted to plot, 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 pacing, 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 pacing. As a result, there wasn't much stuff for just like making the characters be cool people, that sort of thing. As an example, who exactly is Kai, the protagonist? Does he like tea? What's his favorite book? What's his favorite color? That sort of thing. These are all unimportant questions, but they hinted at a greater truth. These characters are still somewhat enigmatic to me. I'm not really sure what their personality is like. That's kind of what I'm talking about here. 
To be clear, these aren't bad characters. I found Kai to be compelling. They just weren't particularly well developed here. Like I said above, this is, uh, I hope this book gets a sequel. I want more from this series and these characters. Let's talk about this book's strongest aspect, its pacing. This is fast paced, like extremely fast paced. And that fast pace made it eminently readable. Uh, I've found this book as easy to consume as like reading candy or crackers or chocolate. You can't just eat one. You can't just stop reading the book. It was a very fast read. The I'm going to skip talking about the plot because like spoilers. Um, however, I'm going to talk about the stakes and the tension for a moment. Specifically in the past, I felt that the stakes and tension were done really well. Uh, what was seen in the past was that the protagonist was a prince of a kingdom. He lost his kingdom and he was held in prison. As a result, it felt like he had a lot to lose, he lost it, and we understood how much he had to gain by being free. That was really good stakes, that was really good tension. Uh, the present, I feel like the stakes and tension weren't as well established, but they're still fine. It was a good read. I enjoyed the author's authorial voice. I liked the book had a somewhat lush, descriptive style focusing on the texture of life. For example, they might describe what a flower smells like, or what a food tastes like. Uh, it was not purple prose, but it was fairly lush prose. This book's tone was serious, but not grim dark. It didn't really discuss gore or any like assault or anything grim like that, but the bad guys used death magic, which was like serious. Uh, I listened to the audiobook. I felt the audiobook was well done. If you're gonna read this and you're open to reading audiobooks, Think about checking it out. I thought it was good. This is a good palate cleanser of a novel, good to read between larger books. It has strong world building, pacing, and plot. I thought the characters were pleasant to read, but they were a bit of blank slates even towards the end of the book. I hope there's a following series to this book because the setting was interesting and the characters are interesting. Okay, have a nice day.